six mothers so they are just sitting they just lie down alternately the other one will sit the other one will lie down at first there were only two of us but now i have to share the bed with another two women 36 year old rosalita cradles her ninth child rita may rosalita is a practicing catholic but she's daunted by what lies ahead no i don't have enough money to take care of my nine kids what is life like for you with with so many children I feel happy, but I know it's going to be hard. How many children, if you had chosen, ideally, would you have liked to have? I only wanted four kids. Meals, like everything else here, are basic. But it's still much better than any care that these new mothers received before they were admitted here. Okay, some plane. Many of them won't have been able to see a doctor at all before giving birth. You see women dying uh, because they don't have prenatal checkup. They don't even know that their blood pressure is high. Ako? Ako. Si? Si Benigno Aquino III. For the president of the Philippines, Benigno Aquino, it's a national disgrace that this situation exists. He's the first president to publicly endorse the reproductive health bill. I keep saying, we're, this is not a fight against the church. This is um, an attempt to address the situation that exists where there are two and a half million being born, where you have 40% of the population that never get to see a health professional, where you have um, easily 20% of the population living below the poverty line, where there's 140,000 or so classrooms that are uh, needed, uh, and, and I can go on and on. Let me say this. <laughs> so many of the people who you say will be needing birth control. They all have cell phones. <laughs> and they spend more on cell phones than they would spend <laughs> in, in pills. Though the debate over family planning is deeply polarised, those who are advocating free contraception say they don't see it as a stepping stone to even more radical reform. Do you think the Philippines will ever allow abortion? I don't think so, not in my lifetime at least, because there's a very, very strong uh, prejudice against the taking of life within Philippine culture, especially of an unborn child. <laughs> But although abortion is illegal and likely to remain so, many hundreds of women each year take huge risks to end unwanted pregnancies. This woman almost died after buying a drink from a market on the promise that it would make her miscarry. We've concealed her identity at her request. I'm a Catholic but not practicing. That's why I was able to do something that was against God's law. But soon after drinking the potion, things started to go very wrong. When I got home, I'd lost lots of blood. We got all the blankets and towels to stop the blood, but it didn't help. So my mother took me to hospital. We went to two hospitals that didn't want to admit me. At the third hospital, I passed out, and they took me in and operated on me and got the fetus out. In this country, abortion is illegal and you were taking a big risk to do it. Were you aware of that risk? It was a really hard decision to do that. At the time, I was being battered by my husband. My children were as well. I didn't want another child to go through that. After her ordeal, a charity provided her with contraception, which otherwise she couldn't have afforded. But it meant continuing to disobey the church's teachings. I don't believe what the church says about family planning. Contraception really helps us, and if I didn't use it, I would have 16 children by now.
Even though abortion is illegal, there are some extraordinary contradictions in Philippine attitudes. We're right outside one of the main churches in Manila. And these vendors are selling religious icons, but they're also very openly selling homemade concoctions to end pregnancies. The name Pampa Regla literally means to menstruate. And the label says it helps women who haven't had their period for one to two months. It claims to cure what it euphemistically calls delay, but it's clearly being marketed as something to terminate pregnancies. What is that? Herbal. Herbal? What does it do? Herbal. What's it for? It says, um... Is this, is this for women? Yes, Is this for women uh, to, yes. to stop pregnancy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Isn't that dangerous? No, ma'am. No side effect. Soon we were joined by the boss of the operation. What is it made from? From her one. From herbs. Roots of the tree. Is that dangerous? No. No side effect, ma'am. So it's just made from herbs and it's yeah. for women yeah. to, to stop pregnancy? Yeah. Yes. And you're sure it's safe? Yeah. Yes. But the woman soon decides to change her story. It's really an anti ulcer medicine, she insists. And when I press her, she comes up with an unusual sales pitch. I tested it. I have, an, I have four kids. And then I have an expected pregnancy. I use it, but it doesn't work. It came out that. <laughs> but it, it is a little bit strange, wouldn't you say? The fact that you're selling these things and your neighbors are selling these things right outside a church. No. But concoctions like this are illegal. These posters warn people of the tough penalties for selling them. It has to be of concern that women with unwanted pregnancies are resorting to unregulated black market products that at best are ineffectual and at worst may kill them. Less than 100 metres away from the stall, the faithful are at prayer. It's one more of the idiosyncrasies surrounding this debate. Another is the fact that the church has an unusual ally in its attempts to deliver a knockout blow to the reproductive health bill. Manny Pacquiao is arguably the most famous and most loved Filipino in the world. An international boxing champion eight times over, he's used his sporting success to win election to Congress, and now he's thrown his weight behind the church's campaign. If we believe in God, we should follow what he tells us. There are laws being passed in Congress, like the Reproductive Health Bill, which in my view are against the will of God. But the church's publicity coup backfired when shortly after Pacquiao had made the comments, his wife Jinky revealed that she'd been using the pill herself after their fourth baby because she didn't want any more children. It's not clear what the result of all this lobbying will be. After all, both sides have been here many times before and there's been no definite result. Why do you think then that five times this bill has been put forward and five times it's not ever really succeeded? Why is that? Because of the fear of the so-called Catholic vote. It has never been proved in any election that there is such a thing as a Catholic vote. And yet this bogey that does not exist, this ghost, still continues to haunt every single member of the Philippine Congress. They're always afraid that in the next election, if they vote for the reproductive health bill, they might lose. If the bill is passed, the church has no intention of that being an end to the matter. It intends to challenge the verdict in the Philippine Supreme Court, and the bishops insist it's the politicians, not Catholic values, that are holding the country back. 
the greater cause of uh, poverty in the Philippines is really corruption, number one. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> misgovernance, no? the lack of good governance. Our population problem is not that there are too many Filipinos, but that uh, they are maldistributed. Second, that the wealth has not been distributed well. As the nation grapples with questions of belief and conscience, who will back down first, the church or the state? How far are you prepared to push it? What is the alternative? Should I keep quiet? And the Catholic faith is uh, the faith that I belong to. And I'm, you know, we are taught that at the end of when you're called before the Almighty, you will be asked, what have you done to the least of my brethren? I cannot go up in good conscience and say, we were happy to let the status quo be as it is and simply ignore the problem. That I think would be criminal, that would be against the oath that I subscribe to, and that would be even against the teachings of the church that I belong to. Back in Tondo, and today Clarissa can just about afford to send some of her children to school for the afternoon. But it won't be long before their education is interrupted again to help earn money for the family to survive. It's a hard life, and one which Clarissa hopes her children won't have to endure forever. Meanwhile, the church's sermons have begun to grate. Well, I would ask the priests, are you going to help us if we have this many children? Are you going to help feed our family? Are you going to help bring them to school? They should realize we are the ones having these sort of problems and taking care of our kids. So maybe this is the right time for this to happen.